Hey guys, something a little bit different this time. Uh, I was inspired by Dave Jones' EEV blog to do an equipment review, and we recently got a Yokogawa DLM 2024 oscilloscope in at work for evaluation, so I thought, why not do a review? So the version I'm reviewing is the uh, 200 megahertz, 2.5 gig sample per, se per second version. Uh, they make these up to, I believe, in 200, 350, and 500 megahertz, all the same sample rate. As Dave Jones likes to say, don't turn it on, take it apart. But unfortunately this is a test demo unit so I can't take it apart, so we'll have to settle with turning it on. One thing that's apparent is this scope is really, really small compared to other scopes in the same range, such as the Agilent 6000 up there. It takes up very little bench space with the uh, screen over the control panel design. The screen is absolutely beautiful, it's a 1024 by 768 8.4 inch display. Same as uh, used on these, this one's only about 6 inch though. And standard 4 channel unit uh, with their probe interface for uh, FET probes. This has also got uh, 8 channels of digital. You can disable the uh, disable analog channel 4 and get 8 uh, digital channels. Uh, it's got standard USB for um, plug plugging in your memory stick. Um, stick around the back. Standard Ethernet, it's got an I.O. for uh, Go No Go for production testing, XGA video output, GPIB, uh, you have more USB, trigger and trigger I.O. Okay, let's start by taking some measurements. Got a little power converter circuit uh, hooked up here. Let's turn that on. I've already set up the display. It produces quite a nice display, nice graded intensity. Uh, let's just give the controls. The controls are Oh, there's one thing that annoys me. Often when you change the control after it's been sitting for a while, it goes through some sort of auto calibration routine. Although you can turn that off if you don't like it. Controls are decently responsive, better than the low-end tech stuff, although slower than the uh, Agilent 6000. The, uh, when you move stuff in vertical, it snaps to the uh, snaps to grid lines, unless you move it slowly, which is quite a nice feature. Um, one other thing I like about this is it has, they call it history memory. When you press stop, you can then press the history button, and you can go back, rotate, you can rotate the jog wheel, and you can view memory back, uh, acquisitions back in time. In this case it's not interesting because nothing changes, but let's, let's make something change and see how this works. Okay, what I've got here is it's set to normal trigger mode, I'm just going to turn off the power to this converter. And now let's stop it and go into history. And as we turn the dial back or backwards in time, you can see the voltage is coming up. Oh, something's weird there. It skipped a bunch of time, but you can sort of see how the converter shuts down. Looking at the list of acquisitions, it's quite obvious why we skipped some stuff there. There's 39 milliseconds of dead time for some reason. I'm guessing that's for display processing, so that's kind of a problem with this. It's not really useful if it misses 30 or 40 milliseconds every every 16 milliseconds. The scope can also search the uh, history memory for different parameters. For example, you can find uh, you can search for through any of these uh, parameters to find waveforms that have those. Have those. Uh, you can also search uh, zones. You can have it. Uh, find only waveforms that cross through that particular box, for example. I think you can also do it for polygons. So that's really useful for finding uh, anomalies in your signal, rather than looking through all those thousands of waveforms. The one thing this scope does really well is zooms. You can have multiple zoom windows. You can control, you can zoom in on a certain part of the waveform, you can scroll around, you can view, for example, the rising edge and the falling edge all at the same time. And this also has uh, multiple windows for the main uh, display. You could put uh, one trace on each one, for example. And again, you maintain a really good resolution. You can actually see what's going on. So really good features there. 
One thing you can do on this you couldn't even think of doing on a 6000 is to produce uh, histograms and trend displays of measured parameters. For example, here we're measuring uh, peak to the trend of the peak-to-peak -peak value of channel 1. If we change the converter operating voltage, you can see how it, it displays the uh, measured value. Okay, let's try a much more difficult waveform. I've got uh, both scopes, the Agilent and the Yokogawa, hooked up to the uh, gate drive on a PFC preconverter. And for those of you who don't know, that basically is a square wave with uh, duty cycle varying, in this case from about 70% up to 90%. And it varies over the sine wave cycle. And let's see what we're getting on this one. Something is not quite right here. Uh, the Agilent is displaying it properly. You see the a fuzzy area where the duty cycle is varying. This one is some aliasing in some way. I figured out if you turn down the memory depth, I have it on uh, full memory right now, if you turn it down it'll start working properly. But the Agilent does this automatically and this I would expect this to do it too, so not quite as good there. And we still have the aliasing problem when zoomed in much more. And still the Agilent doesn't have the problem. And, as before, there are these 16 millisecond dead times where the acquisition stops. And that seems to be causing that aliasing problem. Okay, let's try zooming out on this waveform and see how it looks. The response is definitely slower. And now we have to go turn on the deep memory. And that's a pretty good display. Let's take a single of that. And, of course, we can zoom in and see the details and zoom out. Decent response. This one, of course, a lot faster. You just zoom right out. It's really, really quick. Do a single. Zoom in. Let's actually look at something. And way better response on this one. One thing the Yokogawa is really good at is taking measure, uh, making graphs and displaying uh, histograms of measurements, measured parameters. For example, if we we can take the uh, measure the duty cycle at all the little uh, transitions in this waveform, even though we can't see them at this zoom level. So we, we can take that, execute, takes a few seconds. Oh, look at that! You can actually see the, uh, as the, the duty cycle of this waveform change over time. You couldn't even imagine doing that on this scope. This has no capability of doing that. So big thumbs up there. One other feature this scope has is really deep memory. This has up to 62 megapoints of memory, so we can record a full uh, sine wave cycle at 2.5 gigasamples per second, which is really nice. Although you can only use this in single mode for some reason. I also like the colored graded intensity mode this scope has, which can really bring out the details and the subtleties in the waveform. It turns out the scope does have a roll mode, even though I couldn't uh, find any reference to it in the menu. You just turn the time per division up high enough, and it produces a rolling display. Well, it's a little bit jittery, it's not as good as the Agilent. Uh, let's do that on this one. Set it to uh, roll, and it produces a very much smoother uh, display. But this one gets smoother if you turn down the uh, record length. Now it's on a lower chord length, so it doesn't produce quite as good an image, though. And this also has... Uh, you can perform... Um, the math channel can perform an uh, IIR second-order filter on the data of any uh, cutoff frequency you want. So we, if we do that... Where is it? Math... One. This is a low-pass filter at the channel one, the same duty cycle waveform. Zoom in a little bit. It's now producing a display similar to the uh, um, thing we did earlier with the uh, graph of the measured parameters. This is really good. <coughs> this is really useful if you're doing something like uh, an AC inverter where you have constantly changing duty cycle. It'd be much easier to see uh, what's going on. And the bandwidth limit is just awesome on the scope. Normal scopes are either off or 20 megahertz or so. This one has ranges all the way from full 200 megahertz, 100, <coughs> 20, 10, 5, 2, and so on, all the way down in step power of two steps. This eliminates you having to make up a little uh, 
RC filter if you want to limit the bandwidth. You can choose it right on the scope. So that's really nice. Overall the build quality on the scope is pretty good except for the BNC input terminals which look at that they wiggle. I mean that's going to break eventually unless they've worked out some weird way of uh, attaching those inside. So what's the final verdict on the Yokogawa DLM 2024? Well, it's got the slightly slow input con control response and the acquisition dead time during a screen refresh and the wobbly BNC connectors, but it's got a lot of features that make up for those deficiencies, like the history memory function and the uh, trend display and histogram display of measured functions and the very nice uh, digital filters and uh, band very well adjustable bandwidth limits. So, overall, I give the scope a 4 out of 5. I'd like to thank Dave Jones from the EEV blog for inspiring me to do this. I hope you found this review helpful, and thanks for watching.